Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy. Here today we have some used toothbrushes and they're disposable. The head is not replaceable. Now you can see these are well worn here. But these toothbrushes have, you could probably hear that, have a little vibratory action for cleaning your teeth. And so it's disposable. I'm assuming there's a vibratory motor in there. So what we're going to do today is take these down, tear them apart, and see what we get. We have a simple on off switches here we'll see if we can get the motors out of there and maybe uh, activate them with something like an arduino or something just to have a little bit of fun with that in mind let's jump right in Okay, so we'll just take one here looks like a seam right here if this twists off yes now there is Looks like a AAA battery here. Hmm. I don't want to break it. You just uh, do a little destruction and break off the head. Yes, that came off pretty easily. Yes, I can still feel the motor here. So I'll just bring back this tab here. These are garbage. We'll pull this out. Okay. Still a little charge left in this, but it does seem like it's getting lower. If we look in there, there's not too much we can see. I'm thinking maybe if I get my Dremel and cut it around here. Yeah, I'll get my Dremel. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll play it safe for this one, and maybe we'll just shred this one to bits. But I'll get my Dremel. I'll try and cut this around here and be delicate with this particular one. It's thinned a lot. Let's see if I can get... No, oh, need to go a lot deeper. All right, got that off. Still seem to be locked into place here. I think maybe I'll grind off this end because the switches may be holding this in place. Let's dremel this end. And that, there we go. I can see the eccentric mass here, the weight. Um, so that was a good place to get it. I don't know, let me zoom in a little here. So there's the eccentric weight that creates the vibration. Cut this. I'm looking down here, and I can see all the way through. So I could split this on the side here. Let's try that. I'll get the other side. Got the whole mechanism out. I'll pop this little lever off, see what we get. So here's the motor from here to here. And here's the eccentric mass. It looks like I might have bent the shaft a little bit. It is quite flimsy for disposable. Here's the red wire, presumably the positive, and the black wire here, the negative. So I'm just going to desolder it here and here. And we'll see if we can pop this motor out. It's the red wire off. There we go. Two wires desoldered. Hey, there we go. One vibratory motor. Let's zoom in a little bit here. This runs on a, a one and a half volt battery. I think we'll give it one and a half volts and see what we get. Okay, this is bent at the top here a little bit. So let me hook up voltage. Let's put the negative on first. Touch the positive. Oh, yes. It's interesting what's showing up in camera. And we've got this kind of a strobe effect. Let me get in closer. It's actually rotating very, very fast. And it's creating quite a bit of vibration. It's an interesting strobe effect that makes it look like it's going very, very slow. In actual fact, it's going very, very fast. So with that in mind, it's definitely working. So I've just successfully scavenged this one. I'm going to go to the other one and I'll try and get two. Maybe there's some wearable project that I can use it and have 
both visible and tactile uh, feedback when something significant happens. So, all right, one down. I'll get the other one out. I won't bore you with that extraction, and uh, we'll take it up from there. Okay, here I have the second one, and I managed to get the second one off a lot easier, of course, than the first one because I learned. And now we have these. Something was going to be thrown away. I've got two uh, very small vibratory motors. I'm sure I can work these into some kind of project. But I want to put a voltage on them and just see what we get as far as vibration. My benchtop power supply only goes down to 3.5 volts. So what I did is I created just a simple voltage divider circuit here. Between these two, I have 3.5 across both. And from here to here, I've got 1.5. This is a 7.5 ohm, 5 watt resistor. And this is a 4.7 ohm. 10 watt resistor. So this is my positive, this is my negative. I have just some alligator clips here. So I'm going to hook the negative first and uh, I'm just going to hold up my fingers here right like that and get the positive. I just don't want the positive and negative to touch. So we'll put one and a half volts. There we go. Hey, it's an interesting effect <laughs> with the camera, the strobing effect. It's actually moving very, very fast, extremely fast. And I'm feeling vibration, of course, in my finger. Maybe you can see the vibration. So it's interesting, depending on how much pressure I use my finger, I can actually see if I can get it to look like it's almost standing still just by playing around with how firmly I hold the body. To use this, you would glue this, clamp this to whatever wearable project box that you have and leaving this eccentric weight uh, free to rotate and the vibration from the eccentricity of this mass up here will be transmitted into the body of the motor here and then of course into the case of whatever it is you're making. Of course, its purpose for the toothbrush was to vibrate the head of the toothbrush. It wasn't a great toothbrush as far as that vibratory action is concerned, but it certainly was better than something with no vibration at all. So it's good to see that one work. I'm just going to stick the other one on really quickly. There we go. Both motors are working as I would have expected. They were working beforehand, but I successfully extracted them without... Uh, there we go. You can probably hear that vibration. We have success. What I think I'll do is we'll get an Arduino or something. We'll get a an LED and a transistor and something. We'll have the Arduino switch this on and off intermittently. Do something like that. I'm not sure. We'll, uh, we'll make it up as we go. Before I jump ahead with that, I was curious about how much current this little motor takes. And so I just hooked up my meter here. I'm on the milliamp setting. Assuming we're going to be in the milliamp range less than an amp for this tiny little thing. So I'm all ready to get hooked up here. There it goes. 140 to 145. Somewhere around there. Not too bad at all. Power requirements, I know. We're looking at 1.5 volts. About 140 to 145 milliamps. That's handy to know when we're designing anything. So let's move on from here. Here I have my uh, Arduino Uno. Basically, I just uh, I just loaded up the blink sketch. It was very simple. With the blink sketch, pin 13 is the pin that switches high and low once every second. The ground is right next to pin 13 there. I do have right here a, an LED with the current limiting resistor already soldered on. And so just make sure that the LED and pin 13 is working. Yeah, there we go. So one second on, one second off. Looks like the blink sketch is working. In addition to just the blink sketch, I did add a couple of lines. And I just picked another random pin here, pin 8. And what I did was I said, whenever pin 13 is high, make pin 8 low. Whenever 13 is low, make pin 8 high. So we'll get this vibratory motor and this alternately switching on and off one second at a time. To make this happen, pin 8 will not have enough current to drive this so we'll use the existing power supply here. We'll hook up a simple transistor off of pin 8 because it can easily drive a transistor. And we'll switch the power from here to the motor with the transistor. So I'm going to use the 2N2222 NPN transistor. I'll get this jumped over and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to power this down for now until we get it hooked up. And I just jump the ground right over to this ground rail. 
all the way on the far side of this board is a negative. And then we'll take pin 8, this pin right here, and I'll put it on any row right here. Next we'll get the transistor hooked up right here. Okay, so here we have the transistor, and I just want to point out what I did with that. I kind of threw it together really quickly, so it's kind of a bit messy, but this yellow wire is going to pin 8 off the Arduino. It's coming into one side of this resistor, which is 150 ohms. The 150 ohms is going into the gate of this transistor. It's a 2N2222 transistor. Positive, let me zoom out a little bit. Positive is coming from right here, which is where it was coming from. So we're switching this positive leg. The negative leg is going directly to the motor. Positive is coming around in here. It's getting switched by the gate and coming out this green wire here and going to the red wire on the motor. So what we should see when I give this power is LED comes on, motor is off for one second. LED goes off, motor comes on for one second. And that will keep going on forever. Let's see how it goes. I did tie in the ground over to this common ground over here so that we would have a common ground across both systems here. So let's give it uh, USB power here. It's all we need. And that's going one second. Let's see if I loosen this. There we go. I must have hit off this. So we're alternating LED and motor vibration. One second, one second, one second, one second. I don't know about you. It's just controlling a simple vibratory motor with an Arduino in the most simplest of sketches. Using a simple voltage divider circuit here with uh, two resistors. I don't know about you. I love playing around with stuff like this. I'm going to put these two motors away. If something comes up in the future where I need a vibratory motor, something that's wearable perhaps, I know that I've got them. With that in mind, I really am glad that you decided to hang out with me today and watch this video. I really do appreciate you taking the time. Click the circle in the middle of my finger right here that's my picture to subscribe to this channel follow me on social media thank you for watching and i'll see you next time